Hello guys, good afternoon. Um, welcome, welcome to the, to the evening. Um, I'll try and keep it as uh, easy listening as possible and, and the least amount of boredom hopefully as well. Um, if everybody, everybody can hear me, can you just type yes into the, um, into the chat please? Now just make sure you can hear me and you'll need to use that chat box for, um, for a couple of questions there on as well. Um, we'll get started quite quickly. Um, I know there's a lot of people on it or um, I know a lot of people have, have registered. I know some are on the other side of the world but, and some are maybe next door. But um, we'll, <laughs> we will um, endeavour to crack on in a couple of minutes. Just really, really quickly, this, this topic is really is a big passion of mine, more so to the point that I've even decided to do my doctorate in as well. Injury prevention is, is massive and performance is, is massive, I think, um, in all walks of life. And, and again, performance is different to everybody. Performance can be playing a junior B hurling game in the morning or it can be winning an Olympic medal. So these are these but it's relative to everybody. So it's something I'm going to try to shed a bit of light more on this evening as well. If you guys have any questions, feel free to um, pop them in the chat, please. To, I'll try to get to the raise the hand in the Q&A, but that'll be more towards the end. Um, I'd love to know really quickly, uh, what's your background? Are you a parent? Are you a therapist? Or are you just a coach? And that way I can try to, um, you know, appease the people who are on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the webinar as well. We're going to start imminently so pop into the chat box what you are are you a coach a parent or are you an athlete yourself hello david good to have you buddy chart physio excellent super super a couple of familiar faces there excellent love to see it um i'm in the dungeon actually here would you believe i'm in uh my little office AKA the dungeon. I'm going to spend the next couple of slash four years in this office, I think, writing. Uh, so I'm trying to, trying to get used to it. Um, this is my first webinar back since the, since the winter. So I'm quite excited tonight and uh, hopefully my voice will be there for tomorrow morning. Um, as I said, this will take about an hour. Hopefully, we'll try to keep it as concise as possible, but uh, it's going to take in around the hour. So I think we'll get started, shall we? Um, injury prevention versus performance. It really is an age old battle because you can't have one without the other, to be honest with you. And one absolutely affects the other. If you are carrying injury, you will not perform to the best of your ability. And if you're trying to perform without having the subsequent uh, fitness levels or, or performance levels, you will get injured. Let's create a really good Zoom experience tonight, shall we? So if I were you, I'd turn the sound off, not me, <laughs> hopefully, of yourself. So we can really concentrate on what we're trying to listen to and take things in, in as well. Close all the windows. And I don't mean the windows in the house. I know it's cold this evening, but I mean, close all your other windows in your, on your laptop or on your, on your phone at the moment. It'll, it'll, um, it'll lead for a better connection. If you have a phone beside you, just turn off your Wi-Fi on your phone. Definitely have a pen and paper with you. Please take part as well, because I want you to answer a couple of things back. Let's make it an exciting hour or so, shall we? So about me, I suppose, it's important to understand where I'm coming from. Um, very little bravado of me, if anybody knows me. I'm just about really uh, getting the point across in the most simplest terms possible. You won't find too many big or silly words on here I'm about getting to the point quickly and resolving issues quickly. That's, my, that's the name of the game for me. You know, I actually have... I suppose a nerdy CV as far as uh, my BS, my PA, my BSc, my postgrad, and my masters in the fields of, you know, things like sports rehabilitation, uh, exercise fitness, and masters in sports medicine as well. I'm quite lucky to be a guest lecturer in the UK and in Ireland, and here in Waterford, just down the road, and in Hull, with a possible link to to Wrexham starting in the next few weeks as well. And I've worked with a few different really really leading organisations around the world, and things like Athletics Ireland, Sinai, FEI, all these kind of different kinds of. Um, Government bodies as well. I've been lucky to publish three pieces of research. Um, I'll probably publish, publish four more in the next four years. Uh, as I just said to you, I've started my doctorate in the last few days. Um, scared the life of me, but here we are. It's brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and I host different elite level athletes from all around the world here in Kilkenny. Um, so that's what kind of where I'm coming from. And all this means that I have thousands of clinical hours and thousands of, uh, I suppose, hours uh, pitch side, track side with leading athletes, which will I try to, I try to. You know, lend on to you guys over the course of this webinar tonight. 
And that's what we do realistically. You know, you'll see here in the far left is uh, I'm over in Portugal a few years ago. One of my first camps, which I enjoyed thoroughly working with some really, really good underage athletes, some really, really good Olympic level athletes, uh, all for the benefit of the of the crew and the group. Most recently, I suppose, uh, Saddam Kumi is over here. He's just fresh back from Tokyo. Um, British four and a meter runner. Um, he, I'm now looking at everything, everything for him from performance and injury prevention. So it's a quite an exciting link. I'll be over in the UK with him in the next couple of weeks, COVID allowing, as it were. And then the right, we host workshops um, at different points of the year here in Kenny, which I love to do. Is anybody missing the online workshops or sorry, the, the in person workshops? I miss them massively. I really love the, the in person stuff. It's how you get your points across. Webinars are great, but it's just me talking, isn't it? Um, but the um, the the online web or the in person webinars are really a great great way to learn and, and uh, also you know um, create connections and links as well. And here you'll see at the bottom right, myself and Kerry held a running workshop here at Flaherty. I think Kerry's on the line somewhere there as well. Uh, we held a running workshop there. I think that was late or early, I should say, 2020, I should say. Uh, but that's what we do here, work with different athletes all the time. What is the big idea? I guess. Um, the big idea is, is to perform actions like this that you'll see on the on the left hand side. Um, what goes into that action is amazing. It's it's power, it's it's force production, it's it's the ability to move your force in one direction, I guess, but also upper lower body limbs. But the part you're not seeing here, I guess, is the landing part, your ability to absorb the force that you just created. Even as simplistic as Newton's first law, you know, Newton's first law for every action, there's an opposite reaction. For the force that created, she must accept that force as well. And that's where a lot of athletes will fall down and break down their ability to actually absorb the force that they can create. There's so much emphasis on let's create power, let's create power. The most powerful athletes win, but it's the athletes who can create power efficiently and consistently are the ones that actually win, not just races, but seasons and tournaments and qualify for things like Olympics. Injury doesn't care, guys. Injury is, you know, it's indiscriminate. It happens to absolutely everybody. Young, old, fit, unfit. But you know what? There's not one unicorn on the line tonight. There's not one unicorn here in the clinic any day of the week. We all go through the same processes. We all go through healing phases, inflammation phases, you know, proliferation phases, remodeling phases of tissue. The thing about it is, is that when we compete or when we play sports or when we, when we train, we justify it because we love it. But to be honest with you, your body doesn't see that. Your body sees an, a damage. Your body sees it has, to, it has to go through an inflammatory response. It feels that and sees that it has to go along and create new fibers. And if you're doing it right, if you're doing it right, if you have the right makeup, if you have the right plan in place, you then create fibers that are actually stronger and better than the previous fibers. If you don't, you overcook it and you create damage to fibers and you have inflamed fibers. You have things like tendonitis, and bursitis, and all these kind of stress things that you can have like stress reactions, for example, as well. It's my job as a performance, as well as therapist and as a performance uh, candidate, as it were, it's my job to make sure that we're pulling the ship in the right direction. What does the research say as well? I mean, there's lots and lots of research. We could talk all day about research, but the most digestible stuff I could find around the moment and the most, you know, indiscriminate stuff I could find at the moment, I guess, is 59% increase in the number of ACL injuries among young teenage girls who train twice a week. Sorry, I think that was twice last three times a week. That's, that's not much at all. A lot of people these days, you know, amateur sports has become so professional these days. Amateur sports right now, are, has never been more professional. Everybody has a Strava, everybody has a Fitbit, everybody's tracking what they're doing, their heart rates, their fitness levels, but nobody's really looking at the effect of it. But if we train three times a week, we uh, young girls are having a higher chance of ACL injuries. That's scary. 62% of all organized sports related injuries happen during practice. Why is that? You know, why, why is it happening during practice? There's, that, that's, I suppose, the big question. And then what the other question, I guess, is, is why is there such an emphasis in the, on gym work? Why is the emphasis on controlling, having isolated movements when in actual fact, in open play, in indiscriminate open play, you know, work that can't be guessed is where we see injuries. What does that mean, guys? What's, just type in really quickly. What's that? What do you think that means? What does it mean that people are getting injured on the pitch, but not really in the gym, but with a massive emphasis on gym work? I know field athletes who are, <laughs> they're, on the, they're on the field for their, their, their event, and then that's it, they're in the gym for the rest of it. And these guys are wondering whether they're, they're injured. And then in the U.S. alone, now, using US, U.S. statistics is obviously quite scary because the mass, the mass of the population, shall we say. But if you look at that, we can downgrade into the whole Irish kind of thing as well. But two million injuries a year, visiting the GP, over half a million. And over half, of the half a million, 30,000 people are made to hospital. That is scary. 
That is scary. And then we'll throw lockdown into the mix. Who else, guys? Who found it uh, difficult during lockdown? Who really found it difficult during lockdown? As an athlete or as a coach or even as a therapist or said, who found it difficult to actually make sure that your players, your athletes and yourself were able to do the things you wanted them to do? How hard was it to get your point across? How hard was it to actually train? And how hard was it to go along and make sure that you are implementing the right training protocols and the technique was done right? I would say pretty hard over lockdown. Lockdown has been a challenge that nobody saw coming. No, there's no facilities. Absolutely, I know athletes again coming up in Dublin who do long jumps. Say for long jumpers especially, just no, there was no um, uh, sandboxes available, for example. And I saw just really uh, initiative been taken, some great initiative been taken online and stuff. People jump into little uh, makeshift sandboxes from little and stuff. But you know, a fair play to them as well. For team sports, the team environment was missing. How much do people miss their teammates and the G up they get from their teammates? And not just that, even crowds maybe as well for for just to go on a wing there as well. The mindset has been affected massively. Even myself, I, I remember like, and I love my study, my books, my reading. Even I found myself difficult to actually take to a book or, or take to a, writing a piece when we were not sure at one point what was actually happening or when we get out of our house again. There's a minimum support network, people that they might actually use, uh, especially at elite level, minimal support network um, to make sure that your athlete is kind of set on goals. As again, and then you'll see here in number five, uncertain goals. Again, not really sure when the season will start back, not really sure if the Olympics work is going ahead, not really sure if we need to get ready for a certain test at a certain point to hit a marker for an event coming up. So lockdown was a bit of a, a mess, wasn't it? But we have to have a roadmap, guys. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have a roadmap, right? We're going to actually decide, dive, deep dive, right, into injury prevention here. We're going to deep dive into the issue of it, the effect of it, and also a solution for it as well, guys. And if you're lucky, I might make some plans available to you at the end of the session, okay? Whoever wants to have some plans, just type plans into the, into the chat box there now, if you can. Who wants plans? Who wants to have some plans? Who would love a plan, by the way, to, to make sure that we cover all of the above I've just mentioned there? easy just to go to a document and have a document to absolutely cover nearly all of that stuff wouldn't it maybe so why is it an issue guys you know why is it an issue injury what, what why okay so poor training outcomes if you're injured okay what if you're injured your outcomes aren't going to be where they need to be if this is an issue because you're missing training blocks you're missing you know games you're missing training events for example i've gone through a little injury myself and at, at a smaller level recently and because of the injury, it was great doing all the rehab, et cetera, et cetera. But I missed out on four contact sessions of cardio, CD fitness. Now, luckily, I have other stuff here to work with. But um, I missed out on four CD fitness. So my level when I get back to sport is not as high as it was because of CD fitness as well now. You're going to miss events. And this is not just, you know, local stuff. You're going to miss proper, proper events where you might need sponsorship for as well. You're going to miss events that the athlete's trying to hit certain levels or hit markers for competitions to qualify for competitions. Mindset and worry. There's no bigger link to injury than your mindset and then your worry and stress and how you move when you're stressed. Injury causes pain and, disru and disruption. Absolutely. When we speak about how we move, we talk about repetitions. When we speak of repetitions. Of, let's say we're doing, you know, squats, for example, and if the repetition 9, 10, 11 is difficult. That, that brings about pain, a painful response, but your body automatically does that and it tries to problem solve that area and offload to another, to another structure. If you, if you train in pain for long enough, what happens is, is your body kind of goes to that as a default. We need to make sure that pain disruption, disruption are, are neutralized straight away. And then financial. It's not cheap in injured guys. And physios are extremely dear people, aren't they? They're terrible. They're shocking. They're, exp they're expensive and they, they price themselves up pretty high these days, some of these guys. Um, but it's realistically, financial stuff is quite damaging. And if you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm saying when I say that because parents... You want to see your kid, you want to see your kid pain free. You want to see your kid back to what they love and you probably pay any money. So it is, it can be financial enough. So what I'd like everyone just to name what they think is an issue with injury, what they would like, maybe I haven't covered it just here. We leave it open. What do you think is the biggest issue guys around injury? What issues does it cause you, your athletes or your teams or yourself? What do you reckon? Let's get involved. Lost identity. That's a brilliant one, Sarah. That's super. Frustration coming back too early. Yeah, for sure. Very good, Amory. Yeah, Kerry, no one to stop activities. Very, very difficult one as well. Sarsha, love that. Psychological factor is huge. Frustration and patience, definitely. 
Jade life changing injuries impact. Yeah, it's something that Jade is a really good point because you know when everything's about sport, whether you're 21 or 41, you know, when everything's about your sport, it's so different to disso- difficult to dissociate with that. And that's why you have to have a relationship with a with a physio who has your best interest at heart. Lack of confidence, Catherine, absolutely too. And we do often sometimes take confidence from our performance. But you know, something it's really important that we take we teach our young athletes to be able to disassociate from that from that to make sure that as long as we're seeing in progress, that that's enough to make us to validify us for sure. Feeling be nice, Slade. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're dead right, uh, Kieran. There, absolutely. I'd like to think as well that young people playing sports, they're taught so many life skills, aren't they? Playing sports, the more they're around their teammates, they're taught discipline, be somewhere on time, how to act in a group, how to talk to other young kids, for example, how to actually take orders from somebody that's not your parent, so like not to be disobedient as well. And it's just a feel good factor of exercise is, is brilliant as well. And this is even more reason to keep our young athletes playing sports. Absolutely. effect of it I guess you know the effect of that issue is dropping out of sport and poor health and weight weight gain for example weight gain can link to poor confidence poor confidence and link to poor ac- outcomes academically and so on and so forth that will also be linked to loss of earnings too as well if you're not able to compete if you're a professional athlete you will lose earnings or if you're in a semi-pro athlete you will lose earnings you're probably costing you money to go and do these events anyway and now it's a double whammy because you're injured and you're losing earnings Again, be distance, your life skills, your 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 outside of the team environment. And I think up to very, very recently, we, we just adopted the idea of if you're injured, go away from me. And how often have you seen it, guys? How often have you seen an injured athlete treated like it's a plague? As if it as if it can magically a tore hamstring can rub off on you. It doesn't happen, but to be fair, they're treated like they're absolute outsiders. And I don't want to talk to that person because they're injured now at the moment. And, and it, it happens like that. You know, as I said, interpersonal skills can be distance is, is tough there. It can spin into your personal life. It can absolutely, your bad form comes home to the couch where you're meant to be having fun or comes home to your walks and you're frustrated and you take it out with your training partner or your mom and your dad or whatever it is. Massive on guys is the disrupted training age. If you think about it for a second, let's think about two, let's think about two 16-year-old athletes, for example. This is how serious it is, right? Let's think about two 16-year-old athletes. And the both one is the exception, athlete A is exceptional, and athlete B is actually not bad. And by the time they get to 21 years old, they've both trained and been in the gym and played sport for five years. So let's imagine that the athlete A, who's the exceptional one, has been injured in and out of injury a lot. And they've only maybe played roughly for three, two and a half, three years. When they get to 21 years old, an athlete B, I should say, has trained every single day, has a really good work ethic, applies themselves, has been lucky enough not to have injuries. And if they've had injuries, they've gone along and started them out with a correct kind of plan straight away. Now, when they both get 21 years old, nothing matters anymore, only their training age and their level. I can guarantee you that athlete B will be miles ahead of athlete A. It it disrupted training age is one of these killers. And that's a small country, guys. As an Irish group, and I don't know where you're listening from, other than, but Irish only has a population, Ireland has only a population of 5.2 million, I think it is. We can't afford to have our athletes missing or not having a high training age. And unfortunately, the best athletes that we have are playing hurling, soccer, any sort of GEA. They're playing football, they're playing rugby, they're playing tennis, they're playing lots of different sports. And they're dragged these places because they're very, very good. And the pool of players we have isn't very big. So that's difficult. And also the reputation too. And I can't get this point across enough to people. I really, really can't. Whenever a young athlete or a mom and dad comes in with their kid and all we hear is the same thing. It's look, listen, little Johnny has to play on Saturday. He's the, one of the best players in the team. It's simple for a second. Okay. The reputation of the player is absolutely at stake here because if little Johnny goes along and plays when he's injured, he's not given a true reputation of how good he actually is. Let's think about like in a, in a FIFA kind of a ratings module. Let's say little Johnny is 85 out of 100 and he gets injured and he's back down to 60. He comes on, he's 60. If he plays at 60 for two or three games, it's, the management are fickle. It's all of a sudden Johnny has lost it. Johnny's not a good player anymore. And if you're telling me there isn't a player on the bench who's 65, 70, anyway, who could take his place, do better for the team, you're probably lying to me as well. So that kind of area here too, through no, through no fault of their own, they're putting their place at risk of the team, they're putting their training edge at risk of the team because then they'll try to keep coming back and back and back. And as we mentioned in the earlier slide, your body would find a way to actually offload that pain. And before you know it, the athlete then has adopted a poor movement pattern, is susceptible to injuries all the time, and is not really playing like they should be playing. And reputation is in the bin. What do you think is the biggest effect? Can you name one that I haven't named here, guys? What's a big effect you think of that along that kind of lines too as well? Take a minute if you have to. What do you think a big effect could be? What 
you reckon, guys? What would another effect be, I think, of all this kind of stuff? I suppose isolation from society, yeah. Confidence, massive again. Confidence, mental health again. It's funny how they're all linked, isn't it? But what one thing scale getting injured again massively again a lot of this stuff is mindset isn't it a lot of this stuff is actually mindset and we're getting a lot better at kind of understanding the mindset of athletes as well but the only thing here we haven't mentioned is the issue and the effect are very similar have a crossover but the issue and the effect actually double up it's almost like it's exponential because two of these will lead back into your mindset again and before you know it there's double the pressure on the athlete and i know for a fact last week if anyone was watching my insta story my page last week i was suffering from a little injury and if i'm honest with you I woke up on Wednesday morning a little bit stressed out. When I woke up on Wednesday morning, unsure that I'd done the right thing by documenting and, and maybe making a show of myself, not getting back in time as a 37-year-old male playing at an amateur level, I thought I might have maybe did the clinic in the service. And I was stressed out, you know. And that's only a week-long injury, like, you know, deflate, Catherine, absolutely, yeah. That's a week-long injury, do you know? So that, what, imagine what happens over the course of, you know, months. I'm treating a lady at the moment, and thankfully we're flying with her, but she's been injured for four years now, four years plus. And she's going really, really well, but she's she. It's not uncommon for her to come into the clinic, you know, and be upset, and when she has a good day and a, and a poor enough day as well. So there's a massive link, guys, isn't there? Does everyone understand that the link of that becomes, you know, becomes um the link between those become exponential. If you understand what I'm talking about, just write the link into the chat box there, guys. If you feel if you understand what I'm saying. They're massively linked. Let's get a link into that box if we're starting to understand where we're coming from here with this. It's important to understand the why behind things, guys, before we go along, you know, and start to just, oh, injury prevention is this, and injury is that, and performance is this, and performance is that. We're going to open our mind a bit to it tonight. So what's our solution? <laughs> what is our solution? And I'll often, often hear people, oh, look, listen, I've never really done this or done that. And when I used to stretch back in the day, it was done this way. But just start. Like literally just start because your body is the greatest thing you'll ever own. It will adapt quite, quite quickly. Make sure you just start, okay? Whether it's tomorrow morning, just bloody start. And be consistent. On the right side here, you'll see Curtis Mitchell, who's been over to the States. He's back again, I think, in a, in a month's time. I think Curtis is back with us. But he's just, he's, whether he's in bloody Tokyo or he's pitch side here with me in Scanlon Park at Kenny, he's going through his warm-up. He's going through his injury prevention, injury prevention protocols. He is consistent with what he does. Always, always, always. I'll change one or two, one or two things on him, but he's damn consistent every single time. That's who his body is. It's up to the market. It's up to him. I love this slide, if I'm honest with you. Not just because I, <laughs> I created it, but I love it because it's, it, it's something that really opens your eyes. And this is why you should always just start. And this is why injury prevention and rehab and training are the exact same thing at different levels. And they should be specific to you as well. But look at, look at the overlap here, guys. Honestly, look at the overlap here. Conditioning plans versus injury, injury rehab plans or injury prevention plans, whatever you want to call it. Loading, there's loading in both. It's just different levels of loading, different sets, different reps, different physiological boundaries. Strength, there's always strength in conditioning. There's always strength in conditioning. There's always strength in rehab. There's always strength in injury prevention as well. And a progressive overload. Every single time you go and see your physio, we're moving on to the next one, the next one. In with an athlete, when you're doing your conditioning work, you're always looking for the progressive overload too. To bring yourself to another level. That's the exact same with the exact same energy prevention protocols. If we give you the same protocols all the time without ev evolution, you get mundane, your body relaxes. Who likes the who likes the this? was one of my longest uh, infographs. This took me forever to do up actually. So I hope everyone appreciates that. <laughs> be nice, don't be, don't be too mean in the comments there, but it's uh, it's quite a good infograph, but this really kind of, you know, puts in place how much of an overlap there is and what we, have, what we need to do about it. This is ideal, isn't it? Like, you know, this is the hypothetical training load. This is hypothetical for a reason, you know, Injuries are down high, down low, when they're linked with like optimal or, or low loading with excessive kind of force. Team performance is always looking to be really, really high and the fitness is also stay maintained. But how do we keep a steady ship, you know, during all that chaos? There's three main pillars. Three, okay? Force creation, your ability to create force. Force absorption, your ability to absorb that force. And then typically your neuromuscular facilitation. So your ability to actually go along and correct, I'm sorry, use the correct movement pattern with the least amount of leakage for said action. And those actions happen over and over again. 
Um, and that's massively important that we understand that. It really is important we understand that. But these aren't just gimme words. These are these are things we have to enforce. And again, this is where our plans later on might come into it. So let's look a bit deeper there, shall we? Don't just train, don't just train, you know, prime movers. Don't just train the life of your quads. Don't just train the life of your arms. You know, don't, and don't mistake muscle strength for muscle force. There's too much these days. Injury prevention for protocols. You must be able to lift half, one and a half times your body weight. Okay. They're markers, they're guides for certain areas. Yes. Too much stuff is made of. You have to be able to body, you know, squat your body weight in half under fatigue. No, no. That strength is force is what we need for high action movements. That happens on the pitch. Strength happens in the gym. Force happens on the pitch. You don't go along and wait and say, hello there, manager. Let me see if I can body weight, you know, sorry, squat my body weight here before I go on the pitch today. You're on that pitch. You're using forceful actions to create your, your skillful movements. Okay. So does that make sense to people? Yeah. It makes sense to type in sense. Does that make sense? Am I, am I going off on a, on a tangent there? Does that make sense to people? Absolutely. Absolutely, it does. And also, excuse me, and also another pillar of ours is absorption. We need to athletically develop the glutes, the quads, and the soleus. We have to athletically develop those. They absorb the shock. All the research shows right now that the glutes, the quads, and the soleus would all go along and absorb force for us as we move. If we can absorb force, think about it for a second. If I punch into the ground with my, with my midfoot, shall we say. The force that will be revert, reverberate back up through my body. If I can't control that, something else, as I told you earlier on, your body's going to go along and it's going to, it's going to really find a way or another tissue to take it. After a while, that breaks down. And before you know it, you're stiff and you're immobile and that will lead to poor movement patterns and then turn into injury. Those three muscle groups must be, and I mean must be, um, looked after and let it develop. And then neuromuscular facilitation is massive as well. You know, make it sport specific if possible, but also make sure you include three planes in motion. And again, guys, you know, what's important to say here, I suppose, at this point, that the majority of sports, except for maybe, you know, 100 meter sprint, 60 meter sprint, for example, is they, they will all, especially field sports, you know, they will all have to use three planes of motion to absolutely, you know, make sure there's a, a thorough and competent um, intervention protocol plan put in place for you guys we'll, we'll cover all that with our, with our stuff okay um so it's important too as well and also feel free guys to to take little pictures of this and, and share them and tag us on this little thing tonight so don't be shy but it should be neuromuscular um led by understanding the sports intensity and the actions that lead you know that sort of thing. so it should really be specific to the sport and this study will show i suppose that you know when you when you understand the, the intensity of the action leading to sports you will see in around a 35 percent decrease in sports injuries and that's a massive stat right now that's over one third of people of your athletes in your group won't get injured because if you do the right things early doors what kind of that's a crazy stat really especially in things like ga when the squad is nearly 30 people you're going to save 10 people from injury there like you know what i'm saying so you're going to save 30 people from injury 20 people from injury there and also you won't have that lag and that overlay i guess of uh, people trying to come back from bloody injury as well what's the solution and again our solution is very very simple if we look outside, look at the blocks here for a second. We need to find our baseline. And by our baseline, I mean, we need to figure out what's easy and what's difficult. To be quite honest with you, I'll let you know a little secret. If your athlete goes to you and goes, do you know what, Dave? I don't do anything as far as SSC or recovery is resolved. Happy days, your baseline is zero. Your baseline is absolutely zero. And you can start implementing some of these plans that I'm talking about here as well. And they're basic plans as well there's five main core plans you know one of them is the core itself you know one the second we'll be looking at the hip knee an example hip knee and ankle you know synchronization other ones would include mobilization around that area and we'll chat about those a little bit later on down the line covering the essentials then as well you have to cover the essentials you know and that's just you know your mobility work your, your fire patterns all the above with the high level athletes and then we need to build the relationships. And that's really important as well, guys. That's massively important. And it's not all about, you know, linking up to people and stuff. It's all about building relationships with athletes too. I, I worked with athletes in the past and just because they're a high level athlete, I didn't work with them just because of that. It's because there has to be a relationship there of respect and they'll listen to you and they've, they've, we've common goals as well, okay? It has to be common goals because if they have common goals, you're going to do it together. You're going to do something good together. So baseline planning, really simple, simple guys. Baseline planning should be look very, very simple. We should be defining movement or running, for example. 
So we define moving the running by, you know, synchronization of the lower limb. I've said that to you already today. The ankle, knee and hip moving in one, one unit together in a correct synchronized pattern and also the transfer of force to the opposite limb. And that's what all movement has in common, realistically. Any sport that involves running, whether it's athletics or whether it's rugby, whether it's skating football, hurling, tennis, all the above, you're doing some sort of running in some sort of plane of motion at some, at some point. But we also need to marry the upper and lower limb kinetic, kinetics. And that's why you'll see in the bottom picture here, it's a posterior sling work going on with young Ellen Malloy. And the top picture, you'll see Carrie O'Flaherty there. She's doing a, going through a, a, an advanced med ball session. Not very advanced, but she's standing there doing nothing with the ball, but she worked maybe a couple of seconds later. For a very, very fit lady, that day, she was sweating buckets, um, which was fun. Poor devil. Covering the essentials. Again, you know, we have to look at mobilizing tissue, mastering the basic exercises. You know, again, these plans I'm speaking about would have these, all this kind of stuff on it. Load absorption, just like I showed you, Kira. I, I worked with Kira. Kira's 15 years old. She was a great general, like you know, a local athlete. She went the whole way up to represent Ireland at senior level at a major competition. And she's a brilliant young athlete. But you know, load absorption is massive. We did all these little small things with her, and then synchronizing the ankle, knee, and the hip in one, prepping the, these three joints to move together, and great bringing the different actions to it. And it's not about, and I think we get lost a bit, guys, on, on really cool exercises and, and stuff that we see on social media, but. If you're doing this umbrella treatment, you're no better than like car park coaches who just make up the spot, the session on the spot in the car park. We need to have direction. These plans will give you direction, to be quite honest with you. Building relationships, guys. You know, building relationships isn't just about, oh, you know, this is the crack, this is what we're going to do, here's how we're going to do it. The relationship should promote a social environment that is functional, within which coaches and athletes are prepared to strive and thrive. And that's what it's all about. When you walk in that door, I often say to some of the athletes that come and see me, you know, the, the, the gym here, we call it a high-performance gym, but it's just a room with stuff in it. And we make it the high-performance athlete by our attitude to the, to the session, our, athlete to the, our attitude towards the athlete, and our attitude towards the coach as well. And everything we do in those sessions, the quality of our sessions, that makes the high-performance environment. It's not about being besties. Like, it's not about being besties. It's nice sometimes when some of the athletes come down, you go for dinner with them and stuff like that. It's brilliant. But it's not about being besties. It's a place and an environment where they can consistently grow. And that's why I suppose when you, when you achieve that, guys, they will travel from everywhere. And this is a Wexford uh, young footballer, Hurley. He's, well, he's on our performance program with us here. Um, and he comes down to, he comes from Wexford a lot. He's actually, our plan for him was to get to the States on a scholarship. I'm delighted to say now he's over in the States. I work with him once a week now on Zoom. But he didn't come for the painting on the wall. He came for the results and the environment that I made him feel like he was in when he came here. And standing said to him over there in the UK now. That's a massive important factor. Obviously, that's really important. You know, one size does not fit all. It really doesn't. One size does not fit all. And that applies to each individual sport, each individual athlete, and each way that they actually address themselves to. You know, it, it's difficult. Like, you know, it, it is difficult to, to, to understand that when you say that, but you have to constantly be monitoring things too. So if you go along and get these plans at the end of this session, it's important, guys, that you actually know where your athletes get on point is and get off point. You understand the sport you're going to apply them to as well, because these plans are there as a template for you to actually build them on and drive them further. Because what if we had a plan, you know? Again, we work with athletes from the UK and US to work with us, and we're very, very lucky to do that. But it's important, guys, that we don't just use these plans as a as kind of like a one size fits all thing that we mentioned above. What do you, what's the positive effect of being, being, what, being an athlete, sorry, being a coach or a parent or an athlete? If you had these plans to fall back on in the off season or the in season or at the end of season, you're looking to not really tax your players, but keep them high, keep their performance levels high and their intervention levels low, what would that do for you? The positive effect, I suppose, guys, is you become a trusted advisor. And that's what it's all about. Somebody trusts you to speak about you and they'll come to you regularly for the rest of their lives, probably. You also have the confidence yourself to have a bank of proven exercises, science and driven exercises that may put you in a position to smash every single coaching session or every bit of advice you want to give to your kid or every session that you're going to do with yourself as an athlete. What else, guys? What other positive effect do you think would, be, would come from you having these plans, do you reckon? What other positive effect can you guys think of? I'll give you a minute or two. What do you think? What are positive? What would it mean to you to have those kind of plans? I guess. What do you reckon? 
Bir şey. What do you mean, guys? Would it mean that you're the person that they turn to? Would it mean that you're the person that they go to and no one else can fix them or no one else can help them? It means that it actually means that you become the authority itself in the area, in your area, and people will travel. One of the guys says to me before, um, he actually says to one of my athletes quite cheekily, would you believe? Why would you travel so far to see David? And he simply, the athlete simply said, he said, listen, I, I was told like I could go to Illinois and maybe get fixed, or I could go to England and maybe get fixed. When I go to Ireland, I know I'll get fixed. And that's one of those things where it's because we have these plans and we have these protocols and we're well able to understand. And I hope that everyone's starting to understand now the difference between injury prevention and performance, how they're linked. Absolutely, guys. It's massively important that you understand this because when you understand it, that's when you can tweak it. But it's going to give you that confidence. It's going to make you that go-to person. Because I like the cheesiest, it must be the most overused um, it must be the most overused meme, I'd say, on the on the internet. But I love it when a plan comes together because when a plan comes together, you have a baseline. That's the hardest part. And when you build a relationship with the person, understand their sport, it just links on and on and on. And you can have a chance and time then to understand what they're good at, what they're not so good at, and build it from there. But with these plans, you're going to have an unbelievable template to go along and make sure that you have the best outcomes. But I actually am making these plans, you know, available to you guys. I'm absolutely going to make them available to you. Um, and it's just going to be a way for you guys to become that trusted advisor in your section, uh, the guy that everyone or the girl that everyone wants to go and see to get the best results. Again, it comes back to the basics, doesn't it? When to use your loading, when to use your strength, when to use your progressive overload, and then in turn, move that on another level to become performance, loading for performance, loading for strength, and loading for progressive overload, I should say, as far as uh, conditioning is concerned. Um, which one of you, which one of those guys, which one of those um, attributes, I guess, stands out to you most? Would it be the, the, the absorption part? Would it be the mechanism part? Which part do you think any of you guys might be lacking in? Get involved here. Would it be the part, would it be the, the ankle, hip and movement prep? Would it be the, the force production part? The mobilization part? Which one, which part guys stands out to you guys straight away, do you think? Which would you like, where would you like to improve? Yeah, Chloe, that's the biggest one, Chloe. Ankle, hip, and movement prep, because it's great. And the absorbers, too, it's often overlooked, Jade, as well. Really overlooked. Force production, for sure. Ankle, knee, and hip, a good bit. Mobility, Regina, yeah, for sure. Mobility is one of those ones that really gets neglected. Absolutely, Amory. Mobilization, ankle, knee, and hip, absolutely. Absorption is a massive one. Think about absorption for a second. Realistically, like, you know, when you create so much force, force has to have direction and skill. It really has to, or it's just a jittery movement. And what's that saying? Um, you can't um, shoot a, a cannon from a canoe. Is that what I'm saying? I think that's the, like, literally, if you don't have the correct step, think about it. I often say this to some of my athletes as well. Think about it for a second. When you go to run, what happens when you run? Your quad contracts forcefully. The hamstring turns off to allow, love that answer, Catherine, by the way, the hamstring relaxes fully to allow that forward flexion of the hip. But the glutes, the groin muscles, and the abductors of the thigh have to work to stabilize that joint. Because when you hit the ground, if it's too forceful, if your groins or if your abductors or your glutes aren't working properly in planes of motion it wants to move in, you lose energy and you leak. Then what happens then, another muscle above or below will start to take that force. And there's only so much of force they can take, especially if it's not in the plane of motion. It's actually designed for it. And then all of a sudden then, this force will actually happen over and over again. If you're a strong will, or if it's a big game and adrenaline is pumping, you get on with it over and over again. If you can learn to absorb force, you then lessen the leakage. If you lessen the leakage, you A, reduce injury risk, and you B, increase performance. Super, super stuff. So force absorption for me was one of the ones that I really love working and look, looking into as well. So massive, absolutely massive. In these plans that I'm going to actually make available from tomorrow on, right, there's six sessions, everything from force absorption to movement uh, preparation, to core work, to functional movement work, 
to force, as I said, force production absorption. And there's a couple of little um, sneaky ones from there. They take about 15 minutes a day to do. That's all it takes. And it's once a day. There is six contact sessions. Some sessions you might do only once a day. On non-training days, you'd probably do it twice a day. But it is six contact sessions a week. Now, the problem here is, guys, is the environment. We spoke about a room just being a room. If this is for your kid or if this is for yourself, you're probably bored of laying on the kitchen floor and doing it, right? Your kid probably doesn't want to do it as he's watching, you know, Emmerdale with you as well, or whatever the hell you're watching in the place. Or if you're an athlete, you may not have a gym. Make the area you go to, set up a routine, get on your big, best cheesy music, make a little section in the kitchen floor, push part your table or turn your table upside down for the 15 minutes that you're in there and make it your high performance area. That is the best way for application and adherence to a plan. Because as I said earlier on, it's consistency is what it's all about. It's your environment that you're in and it's your consistency of and when you start this as well. These ones, these plans that I'm letting go and release it, these are ideas for any level. They really, really are, guys, any level whatsoever. And they're perfect for players and coaches and athletes, absolutely. You could actually spend, guys, you know, you could spend your off-season, if you're an athlete, you could spend your off-season just doing these exercises and looking after them, just to get your body used to it. Find out what's good, what's bad, what's different, where you need to improve, and bring that information back to your physio as well. If you're a coach, you can absolutely use your first couple of sessions outside of long distance running or, or tempo runs, whatever you're doing with your teams, whether it's field-based sports or athletics. You can add these in at the end of a session just to make sure, or at the start of a session, just to make sure your athletes are priming their bodies to make sure that they're actually taking and they're moving and they're absorbing force properly pre and post session to make sure that they can see when they're non-fatigued or when they're fatigued. And then I suppose if you are like, a, a, if, if you're, you know, a, a physio yourself then as well, that these can be used to help an athlete overcome chronic injury straight away. Identifying where your athlete is poor in this will problem solve why they're injured all the time. Super, super simple. It is absolute gold. I really wish I had it back in the day. But so I'm going to make it super simple, guys. You know, they're easy to follow. These, these plans can be sent right to your email and you can start whenever you want. You can print them off. You have access to them forever. I'm going to put a link right on my Facebook page and I'm going to put a link on our Instagram uh, link tree and there's a massive discount on them. There's, there's a small fee attached. I think it's I think it's 39 euro, but for one day only, I'm going to make it 29 euro for everyone that's on this call tonight. So all you have to do is there's a PayPal link. I just pay 29 euro and put it underneath your email you want center and type in just webinar as the as a hashtag webinar as well. That gives you your discount code. Is that fair enough? Hashtag webinar, your email written in the, the PayPal account, that's 29 euro for the next 24 hours. We'll also maybe, you know, get you a link sent out to you guys in the next day or so, just to remind you or send you on there as well. But what have we learned, I guess, in this area? We've identified, you know, the issues. What is the issue? We've identified what is the issue with this kind of stuff. We definitely understand the link between injury prevention and performance and the link between movement in the lower limb as well. Absolutely. We've looked at, we've worked at, you know, mapped out the solution format. And our solution is simple. It's understanding. It's understanding the link between all of these. What intervention means to some athletes, what performance means to other athletes and how big that, that is when we look at our athletes who are playing when they're injured or not at performance levels. We definitely covered a good bit as far as our three pillars are concerned and what they mean to people as well. And now we're going to have access to intervention plans, which is gold, if you ask me, guys. It really is. If you want those plans, it's absolutely gold. It's going to change the game completely for you guys, 100%. And there's also, I've also put in a reflection survey that I'd love everyone to actually do. And reflection is massive, guys. Reflection is a way, and you often find that it's always at the forefront of your own brain, what you want to learn or what you're taking from things. So if you can do a reflection survey that, will add, that I've attached on this here before you log out tonight, it'll actually help you better understand what you learned from this, what your biggest takeaway was from this, and it will actually pique your interest, interest in further study outside of this webinar. That's what it would actually do to you. And to make it super simple then, guys, I absolutely love when, when, when I'm reflecting on things because that's how I design and how I actually influence my own career myself. And it's how you find niches in the market. It really, really is. But let's be proactive about this. Let's not be reactive about this, right? That this count, as I said, is on for 24 hours or you can call us here at the clinic as well. It's up to yourself, whatever you want to do it. Some people might not have PayPal or whatever. You can absolutely call us and say you're on the webinar last night and we'll get it sent out to you right away. So super, super easy. We'll have a follow-up email sent out there as well if you want to expand your knowledge, absolutely. And again, the reflection survey, guys, just, just for me to you guys, reflection survey is massive. It's absolutely huge. It's how you want to 
And that, for me personally, is the difference between the best coach in the world and just coaches. Reflection and constant you know, analysis of what you're doing, what's good for your athlete, what's bad for your athlete, and how to improve those things. Very, very simple. Right, I really enjoyed that. I've finished a little bit quicker than I thought I would, thank God. I didn't want to bore the backside off of you. Um, it's really interesting for me, guys, to kind of get that really good feedback. And I have to say, thank you so much for actually getting involved tonight as well. I thought some of the answers were brilliant and very, very insightful. And for anybody catching us on catch up, feel free to reach out to us uh, at the clinic on Instagram or on Facebook as well. We're happy to answer any questions there. But I'd love to know, guys, does anybody have any questions here for me about this? Or even, even though you have me for like 10 minutes or so, would you have any questions about your own athletes or or your own kind of uh, your own body, for example, as well, or who you met, any therapists who are or dealing with injury and, and different athletes as well. I'll answer a couple of questions here really, really quickly. But if I'm really honest with you guys, the last thing to take from this is the templates, when they're there and used properly, will be a complete game changer for every one of you here. So definitely get on that, guys, especially in the 24 hours when it's, uh, when it's on a super cheap discount. Yeah. So anyone got any questions, guys? I'd love to hear some. I see that, Catherine, from the last one. Yeah, that's uh, your prior knowledge is absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's all good. Um, there's a couple of Q and A's in here. I'm not sure. There we go. Ah, yes, excellent. Plan. I'll try and get to the Q and A guys in the chat box. So pop it into the chat box if you guys have questions, and that'd be great. Um, it's super simple. I said to you, what well, what'll happen is the plans will be sent out to you via email. And you will have access to them, as I said, for good or printing them off for yourself would be quite handy as well to have in a little folder. But they will have pictures and bullet points and videos and sets and reps and everything is on there. It's super, super simple. That's a great question. Gioni, um, what would I say is a factor, is key factor in rehab plans often missed in programs? Simple, really. And I think it's something that it's quite it's quite obvious when I say it is what I think, but it's the most overseen, overlooked, sorry, I should say, I think, is when we get an athlete ready for performance and they've passed all their tests, their strength tests, for example, what I often try to do is what I call tough and rough. And I haven't patented it in any way, shape or form, but I, I don't know if anyone else is doing it. But what I often try to do is I'll try and make an athlete perform a skillful action of that sport when they're tired or when they're fatigued. So what I look for is two different things. Tough is timing under fatigue. So the athlete's timing under fatigue. When they're what's their time to catch the ball, kicking the ball, controlling the ball when they're tired? Their reactions under fatigue. How they react when they're actually, thank you, Captain, thank you so much. Uh, how do you react when they're fatigued in a skillful action? So if it's a defender having to turn with the wing back, et cetera, or it's a forward trying to, to enter the ruck, for example, in rugby, when they're fatigued, how do you enter that ruck? Looking at their reactions under fatigue is massively important, usually important. Um, but we don't do it because it, 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 actually, it actually requires a deeper understanding of movement itself. And people, maybe they're in their honesty or, or maybe they're not really that pushed, but they oversee it. So getting your athletes to actually train under fatigue is massively important in any sign-up session as well. Massively important. Um, and then, sorry, who's this here now? Would the force absorption training be important for someone prone to stress fractures? Sarah, I think you're quite a accomplished runner, Sarah. So if I, it's the same Sarah Kelly I'm talking about. Um, yeah, absolutely. Think about it for a second. What structure? If we think about athletes and runners who run distances, they're usually maybe a little bit skinny in that kind of calf area. Um, what happens then is that they're, they're, they're quite uh, so they're having stress fractures, stress reactions in these areas because the force is not being absorbed by the calf. It's not being absorbed by things like flexor releases longus or often things like posterior tibialis, which are massively involved in the control of the arch, shall we say. And if you keep pounding and pounding and pounding on uneven surfaces without the proper force absorption to create a new movement pattern for the opposite limb, that would absolutely lead to a stress reaction somewhere along the line. And things, even things like tendonitis and collapsed arches and, and again just leading onto it as well and runners have that runner's height don't they so they're and they're strong mindset like so they run through them think quite easily so you can be damn sure you can be damn sure that's a massive one uh sarah thanks for that question it was, it was very very good very very good I'll, I'll take one more question actually if anyone has a, has a nice one they want to ask even about themselves or whatever i feel like I've, I've done my part a little bit then as well uh, that'd be great
anybody got a little cheeky question there? I wonder. If not, cool, don't feel pressured. <laughs> Okay, great. Guys, what's going to happen now is, any, especially for any therapist out there still on the line, search a half text in the search chat, cheers, my love. Um, yeah, so what's going to happen is they're going to follow this up with a performance-based one in, yes, uh, Jade, absolutely, my love. I'm going to follow this up with a performance-based one for coach and therapist again, maybe in the next couple of months. My doctor is quite intense, to be honest with you, so I'm trying, really struggling there with that. And in the winter, I'm going to actually launch a mentorship for the physios. It's going to have 12 different modules over the course of a year and how to set up a business, how to be, how to be, how to be, you know, uh, how to be everything from your mindset, how to be proactive about your mindset, how to be, how to increase your skill level in the clinical room and in the rehab room, how to actually involve your business, how to hire people, absolutely everything. So that will all be done in the, in the new year. I'm going to put 12 modules together over the course of the year with coaching calls. That'll be done, but I'm absolutely going to get on another, another performance-based one. And the next one will have different videos. So, but tonight, guys, I really want everyone to understand, just understand things, because when you understand it, you learn. When you roll to learn things, you can get lost any minute. So guys, thank you so much. And thank you a minute for the kind words too. And feel free to share and stuff and tag us and everything else. It's, it's brilliant. We love that kind of stuff around here. And we're looking forward to the new high performance issue starting in the next couple of weeks. Um, and thank you so much. Okay, guys, I'm going to get off the line. Thanks a million. I hope everyone had a great night. God bless.